hey guys welcome back to my channel today i'll be teaching you how to make the gostoba cardigan this is inspired by the season and as you know we're in october and people are making halloween outfits so um i decided to come up with this for this particular time and this is my very first video since i uh transferred all my content onto the new channel so guys you'll be seeing all my content on this channel and not on the old channel because the old channel content has been taken down so this is our very first project as a new channel and i'm very excited to bring you the gustova cardigan and um the other thing that i would like you to know is you can order for this cardigan in your preferred colors either through instagram dm or on my website or you can email me on the email that's on my website and you can make a custom order for this and this piece is also available to purchase it's only one and it's in size uh, small to medium so uh let's get started and learn how to make the gustova cardigan we're going to start off with a skull and we're going to start with a white bit which is in the middle of the uh, granny square so you're going to make a slip knot sorry a magic ring so you just do this like that and then grab your hook and pull on the working yarn like that and then you're going to hold remove your fingers and hold that point you should be having something that looks like this and then you're going to make a chain of two and that chain of two doesn't count as a stitch you're going to go into the magic ring with a total of nine double crochets so for a double crochet you yarn over insert your hook into the magic ring pull up a loop you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so that's our very first double crochet and then yarn over insert your hook into the same magic ring pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so that's the second double crochet we are going to continue to place double crochets until we have a total of nine double crochets into the magic ring so this is four five six seven eight and nine so we have a total of nine double crochets not including the chain two at the beginning of the round of the round so after your nine double crochets you're going to make a chain of five and then go into the magic ring with a double crochet and then you're going to make a chain of three double crochet into the same exact magic ring and chain five and then go into the very first double crochet that you made and place one slip stitch so for a slip stitch you insert your hook into the stitch pull up a loop and then pull through so that's how we've ended our round you should have something that looks like this and now we are going to get our tail and close it you're going to just pull on it so that we close the magic ring this is the magic ring right here so when you pull the tail you can see the magic ring closing up so this is uh, the end of round one and you can see the skull head has already been formed and then now we are going to chain one single crochet into the same exact stitch single crochet into the next and continue to single crochet into each and every stitch until we get to the chain space So we have our single crochets into all the nine um, double crochets below 
into the chain five space you're going to place a total of six single crochets three four five and six and then we are going to go into the next chain three space we're going to start with a slip stitch into it then you're going to chain two and double crochet two times into the same exact space one two and then you're going to chain two and slip stitch into the same space the same chain three space and then you're going to go into the next chain five space with a total of six single crochets So after your six single crochets, you're going to go into the first single crochet that you made with a slip stitch. Like that. And then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. This marks the end of the first color. So after this, you should have the definite head uh, shape of the skull. And now we are going to introduce our second color. For me, this is going to be black because it's what I used for the tutorial. But I'm going to try my best to explain and show you exactly what I did. I know black can be um, a bit challenging when we are working tutorials because it's hard to see. So. You're going to start off with a slip knot. And then you are going to go into the stitch after the stitch where you place the slip stitch. So into this one. And you're going to attach your black yarn. Like that. Now you're going to chain three and that counts as a double crochet. Go into the same exact stitch with one double crochet. Chain three. Go into the same stitch with two double crochets. So that means the first stitch has two double crochets. Chain two. Chain three. Two double crochets. Two double crochets. Chain three. Two double crochets into the very first stitch. Now you're going to place one double crochet into the next stitch. One half double crochet into the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. So those are half double crochets. One double crochet into the next stitch. In the next, you're going to place two double crochets. chain three and two more double crochets into the same exact stitch and you can see we've formed our second corner the chain three spaces create the corners of uh, the skull granny square so after this you're going to place one half double crochet into each of the next four stitches so one two three and four then after this you're going to place one double crochet into the next stitch into the next stitch you're going to place two double crochets this is a corner so two double crochets chain three and two more double crochets okay this is what we have one double crochet into the next stitch and now um, we are going to go into the next double crochet we're going to skip over the chain two that we have here go on top of the first stitch the first double crochet and place a single crochet single crochet into the next 
a stitch and then we are going to go into the chain the top chain of the chain two and we are going to place one single crochet so that's a total of three single crochets across the lower jaw of the skull so we are going to go into the next stitch with one double crochet We are going to place a corner into the next stitch so two double crochets chain three and two more double crochets okay so that's our uh, our last corner because the first one is here the second one is here third and fourth and then into the next four stitches you're going to place one half double crochet into each one two three and four and then um into that stitch where we placed a slip stitch remember we didn't place a stitch in there so we're going to go into that space with one double crochet and then at this point you can go on top of the chain three at the beginning of your round and you're going to place one slip stitch and now we've turned the skull into a square now uh, we're going to chain three and that counts as our very first double crochet you're going to go into the next stitch with one double crochet so from now on we are going to just place one double crochet into each stitch and in each uh, chain three space we shall place two double crochets chain three and two more double crochets so now we are at the chain three space so we're going to place two double crochets chain three and two more double crochets Now we're going to go into each and every stitch after that with only one double crochet into each stitch until we get to the chain three space. So into the chain three space, you're going to place two double crochets, chain three, and two more double crochets. And then um, one double crochet into each of the next stitches. And we're going to repeat this all the way around until we come back to the beginning of the round. So I'm placing my last double crochets of the round before I get to the very first double crochet or the chain three at the beginning of the round. So I've placed my last double crochet into that very last stitch which is here and I'm going to go on top of the very first chain three 
that I made for the round and I'm going to make a slip stitch so this is what we have for our skull so guys as you can see I have so many of these granny squares made I, so I am going to start making the sleeves first then I'll work on the main body later on so all right so the first thing that you're going to determine is how thick how wide you want your sleeves to be not how long how wide you want the sleeves to be and for me that is about 15 inches that will be perfectly fine for me or a size small to extra small sometimes even medium so um that means i have determined that three granny squares are enough for my sleeve and if you have a look at what i've already done this is the thickness that i'm going for that's the thickness of my sleeve uh, and you can see it's three granny squares wide so um to start attaching you're going to get three granny squares or the number that you need for your size if you have thicker arms please consider adding um, another granny square to this so that you have four here you're going to make sure all the granny squares are on the wrong side so the way i determine the wrong side is uh, these strings the strings that i left behind on my granny squares determine the wrong side of my work and you can see the right side doesn't have those strings there so you're going to place them on your wrong side and then you're going to get three more granny squares let me put this here and you're going to place them on the wrong side still like that now we are going to go across this work we're going to go across um the granny squares while joining them and i want to use a five millimeter crochet hook so i have gone down two sizes so that i don't have very loose stitching when it comes to joining the granny squares uh, the main body of the skulls was made with a 7mm crochet hook but the joining I'm using a 5mm so you're going to get, get your yarn and I'm using black I'm sorry for using black because I know we struggle to see what we are um, making but I'm going to be as clear as clear as I can so that I can explain everything in detail so you're going to grab your hook and go into the very the other thing that you need to note sorry all the skulls should be facing the same direction so you can see all of them are facing upwards so you're going to start with this part here so this will be the very bottom of your sleeve where we shall make the ribbing for the cuff of the wrist so um, you're going to go into the chain 3 space and we're going to attach our yarn we're going to first deal with the first two uh, squares so after attaching your yarn you are going to go into the same space with a single crochet then you're going to single crochet across while going into each and every stitch into um, both the squares so that we can join them so we are single crocheting into um, the granny square on this side and the granny square on this side and matching the stitches together just make sure you don't miss anything so that we finish at the same point on both granny squares so you're going to just go into each and every stitch with one granny square one single crochet sorry uh, this project can be a little bit hectic and tiring so I advise you guys to take your time to make the granny squares if you make five a day that's also fine and then um, when it comes to the space here you're going to go into it with one single crochet and now we are done with the first two granny squares we are done joining them and now we're going on to the second pair of the granny squares so cross over into the chain three space And you're going to make one single crochet and single crochet all the way across going into the stitches on both ends of each granny square 
all right so after walking across your three um granny squares um remember i figured out that i need three granny squares for the width of my sleeve so once you're done with that you're going to bring this side you can see we are on the wrong side here we've worked our single crochet row on the wrong side of our work that's the wrong side of the work the one with the ridges so um just fold over like this and then you're going to bring this point to here and you're going to make a slip stitch into the very first single crochet that you made for your row and then after this you're going to chain one and cut your yarn leaving something to weave in of course So let's see what we have from there. Um, remember, this is the wrong side. The inner side is the wrong side of our work. If you want your sleeve even wider, go ahead and add more um, granny squares. But this is the width that I want for mine. Only three granny squares. And now, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to add another row of granny squares. So I have my three granny squares here. And this time, I am going to just uh, lay out my work like this. This is the, still the wrong side. Make sure you're working on the wrong side. And we are going to join our next layer. Make a slip knot. And then grab one of the corners on the wrong side and then insert your hook and grab the granny square make sure they are all facing the, the same direction which is up you can see the face is facing this side and then also for this side and then you're going to go into the corner and attach your yarn make one single crochet into that space the chain to space or the chain three space and then you're going to attach into each and every stitch just like we did for the previous uh, granny squares just go stitch to stitch while attaching the two granny squares together along the edge okay so we are coming to the end here and then you're going to grab your next granny square make sure it's facing the same exact direction so you're placing your last single crochet into the chain three space and then your next single crochet into the chain three space of the next granny square and then into the opposite uh the granny square on the opposite side and make a single crochet and then start attaching the stitches together so i figured that this would be the easiest way to attach the granny squares since um we haven't done the normal granny square whereby the last row uh, does the joining for us. So I was thinking of the easiest way to join these granny squares because by this time everyone is tired of the project and you just want to have it done. So after your last single crochet, you're going to get your next granny square. Make sure it's on the wrong side and we're going to be attaching it onto this one. So one single crochet into that space and the space on the granny square on the opposite side and then attach all the stitches so here you can determine how long you want your sleeve to be you're going to keep attaching those granny squares 
until you get the length of the sleeve that you want because we have already determined the width of the sleeve that we want so continue to attach I don't know if you can see what I'm doing because I'm using black but I'm trying my best to explain everything as much as I can because I don't want to introduce another color at this point so after your last single crochet you're going to go into the very first single crochet of the row and make a slip stitch chain one and cut your yarn and now we have something that looks like this so when you turn your work to the right side you can see the sleeve is now forming but we don't have the joining um, at these points yet the vertical joining we have the horizontal joining but the vertical is not yet done so you're going to determine how long you want your sleeve to be and for me i think i'll have a total of three i think this is enough uh, so that when it comes to the body i do something wide that can cross over to uh, somewhere down my arms so that we don't have a very long sleeve because we also have to cater for the ribbing of the cuff of the wrist so i'll do three so you're going to turn your work to the wrong side still and we are going to start attaching the granny squares vertically so just turn your work to the wrong side let me increase on the lighting so that we see what we are doing so we have these you can see the ridges we have these ridges that we have just made using the single crochet stitches and we have them at each point where the granny squares meet so um the next thing that we are going to do is attach vertically so let me show you how to do that you're going to grab your yarn and uh, we are going to start with this part all the way up so attach your yarn into the chain three space single crochet into the same space and then start joining the stitches just like we did uh, horizontally so we're going to go in with single crochet stitches into each and every stitch until we come to the end of the first uh, granny squares or until you get to the chain three space If you have any tails on your work, make sure you pull them to the wrong side so that when it comes to weaving in, we don't have much to deal with. So this is what we have. We have reached the chain three space and you're going to place one single crochet in there and then cross over to these two, the next two granny squares. Place one single crochet into the chain three space like that and then continue to join into each and every stitch all right so just keep doing this all the way up Alternatively, you can weave in your ends as you work, but I prefer to weave them in at the end for this project. So after this, cross over to the last two granny squares. If you have more granny squares, you're going to just repeat the same exact process 
until all your granny squares are done. And then I'm placing my last single crochet into the chain three space, chain one, and cut my yarn. And that's it for the vertical joining. Let's see what that has created. Make sure all the joining is on the wrong side. And now, um, if we turn our work to the right side, this is what we have for at least uh, for the part that we have joined this is what we have so we're going to go ahead and join these two parts or three parts it depends on um, how wide your sleeve is but for me I still have two sections to join so that um, when I when I turn my work to the wrong side uh, we still have these gaps and we want to get rid of them we have this and this so we're going to just repeat the same exact process that we did here just attach your yarn here and walk your way all the way up the sleeve so that you get uh, rid of those holes and separations in your sleeve so that we can have a block sleeve so let me go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back at that point make sure you're always working on the wrong side of your work so Okay guys, so after joining uh, all the vertical lines of my sleeve, this is what I've come up with. Uh, this is the right side of my work. So the side that doesn't have so many loose ends to weave in is the right side. And I'm going to pull all these uh, loose ends onto the wrong side so that they always stay that side. And we have a, a neat finish on the outside part, at least for now before we weave in the ends. Use your hook and pull everything to the wrong side so that you get a clear picture of what to expect at the end of your uh, project. So this is how thick my sleeve is and um, I'm trying to stretch it out so that I get the clear uh, measurements. So this is the thickness of my sleeve. If you have thicker arms, then you will consider adding another granny square line so that you have four by three. So the length is three squares. The width for me is three squares. So it's a three by three. But if you have uh, thicker arms, then you may consider four by three. So four uh, horizontally and then three downwards because you don't want a very long sleeve unless that's what you're going for. Uh, you can do whatever you wish. So my first sleeve is finished and I'm going to go ahead and make my second one exactly like this and then we shall come to the body of the sweater. Alright, so I'm done with the second sleeve and I'm struggling a bit with the lighting because my uh, power is a bit messy but I'm going to go ahead to record. I have one light that is providing the light at the moment and that's what we are going to use for now. So this is what the sleeve looks like. I have my second one here. Now um, we are going to go onto the main body of the sweater and for that I started with the back panel so for the back panel I did a five one two three four five by three so if you want your sweater a bit longer then you're going to make another layer you can do five by four but um, here is a little bit very wide for me but that's the look that I'm going for I don't want something very small so if you're um, a size up, then you're going to consider adding more skulls to the sides. But I would recommend uh, an odd number 
and I'm going to explain why. The reason why I have five across is because when it comes to the front panel, I want it to go onto the 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 side of the back panel and then the second um front panel goes and covers here so that we leave at least one column or one row of the skulls for the neck area because i want my sweater a bit open so um you're going to go ahead and make your back panel just join the the granny squares just like i showed you on the sleeves but this time we are not joining into the round you just join across and cut your yarn and then join across cut your yarn then you start joining like this as you cut your yarn and uh, for the back panel i have a total of 15 granny squares now um let me put this aside So since I have uh, my back panel with uh, three, sorry, five by three, um, I'm going to have two by four for my front panel. I'll explain why. Um, the four is because this one is going to fold over like this on top of the of the sweater in order to achieve the the neckline shaping. So. If you have um, your back panel three skulls upwards, then you're going to add one more um, skull on top so that uh, we get the fold over for the neckline opening or the neckline shaping. So for the front panel, I have two by four because um, in most cases, people would predict it's two by three but I did it two by four and we shall see how that turns out. Uh, I've already joined the granny squares like this. So I'm going to just go ahead and join um, the, the in-betweens of the squares. So make sure all your skulls are facing the same side. I've stressed this enough in this video. We don't want to see any mistakes when we are almost coming to the end because this project is really hectic to make. So if I get time, I will do some more skulls and I will make a pair of shirts to match this uh, sweater i think that would be great i hope i get enough time to do that All right, so I'm done with the first part. Chain one and cut your yarn. And you're going to go ahead to join here and across these ones. So here is how my front panel, one of my front panels looks like. It's a two by four. Now I'm going to reintroduce my back panel. So remember, I told you my back panel is 5 by 3. So I'm going to put the first uh, front panel 
on this side make sure the skulls are facing the same direction so this is the right side and this is the wrong side on both pieces so I'm going to just do this and then I flip it over and I join this part here just like I've been doing before nothing is changing I'm going to join the two uh, the two skulls across. If you happen to have seven um, skulls across for your back panel instead of five, because you're making a bigger sweater then uh, your your front panel will be three three by three if you're using the same length as mine so your your front panel will actually be three by by uh, four four lengthways and then three widthways so that we leave that middle column for the neckline um, shaping. It will make more sense when I do it and I explain it well it's done. So I finished joining the front panel to the back panel, uh, making sure that I join on the wrong side of my work, pull through. And then when we fold it over like this to balance the lower line, we're going to have something like this at the top. This is what we're going to have. And this protruding thing don't worry about it uh, we shall cater for it later on when we are doing the ribbing on the edge so this is what we have and then we are going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on this side so bring your second front panel which is this one and put it on top of the cardigan you can see the opening is here and we don't place anything on the middle column of the back panel so just place it like this and flip it over to the wrong side and join from here all the way outwards to this side. So I ended up removing that extra layer on the front panels. As you can see, I'm trying to take it out because it was uh, making a funny shaping at the front of my work. So I'm trying to take it out right now. All right, so um, that means the front panel has uh, two by three the width doesn't change it's only the length that has changed so that it balances with the back panel all right so this is what we have right now the cardigan and at the top we've gotten rid of that extra extension that was happening around here so I had to take you through the whole journey because I had recorded it in a different way. So 
um, I wanted to make everything clear for you. So the only thing that has changed is that extra layer that was on the front panel. So um, after this, we are going to get our sleeves. And we're going to join them onto the sweater. So you're going to turn them to the wrong side. Make sure for the body of the cardigan, all the skulls are facing up. Now, uh, when it comes to the sleeves, you are going to turn your work to the wrong side, like this. And remember, for a person like me, I have three skulls for my sleeve. So that means I have to distribute half... Um, okay, we have this. We have this, this uh, skull and on the front panel this skull on the back panel that will represent two skulls then i'll consider half of this and half of this that's what i'll consider to join the sleeves onto the main body of the sweater so just get your work and determine the middle point of the granny square so I'll start from here, then grab your yarn, and we are going to start joining, but then you have to make sure that the, the downer part of the sleeve where we are going to put the ribbing is where the, uh, the base of the skull is. So we join on this part that's facing the head part. So we start joining. Uh, since I'm in the middle here, I'll look for the exact middle of one of the skulls. One. Here it is. So we are going in like this and then we start joining using a single crochet stitch. And then you're going to place one single crochet into the space and then cross over to this side, one single crochet into the space, and we start joining. Um, the next skull. Okay, so we are going on to the other skull and we are still joining normally.
so we are coming to the end of this curl and after that you'll notice that you have um, half left of this curl on the sleeve so we're going to continue to join until all those stitches are done and we should end on the middle part of this curl as well so just continue joining until you run out of stitches on the sleeves or until you come back to the very first single crochet that you made Okay, so I think my stitches are done and after this you're going to go into the very first single crochet that you made for your sleeve with a slip stitch but then don't cut your yarn because we are still joining. You're going to join this part of the front panel and the back panel so I hope this makes sense. After going all the way around the sleeve, all the way around the sleeve you are going to just join the sides of the sweater because this is now the side the part that joins the front panel to the back panel uh, or under the armpit just continue to join until uh, the base of the sweater And all this is happening on the wrong side of the sweater. I hope you're noticing all the joining parts are behind the sweater on the wrong side. So we are done and when I turn my work because this is what you're going to have at the moment and you can see how the sleeve is branching off from the from the main body of the sweater so when we turn our work to the right side I'm so excited about this I don't know why uh, this is what you're going to have make sure the skulls of the sleeve are facing towards the main body of the sweater because when your arm rests uh, the skulls will be facing the same exact direction as the main body of the sweater so we're going to go ahead and do the same exact process for our second sleeve and then I'll come back to show you the final touches of the sweater so yeah this is one side done All right, guys, so this is what we have after joining the two sleeves onto the main body of the of the sweater. Excuse the background, I still have a lot going on there, but this is basically the shape that we have right now. I'm very happy with it. And now we are going to go onto the ribbing around the neckline, around the cuffs, and at the bottom of the sweater. And I think I'm going to go with the orange color because it 
real gives uh, spooky vibes so and also to add a touch of character onto the sweater so that it's not black and white plain so um if you want to use black go ahead and use that but i'm going to give it a touch of orange so that we will bring out the whole halloween theme thing so uh let's get started okay so we're going to start with the ribbing of the cuff which is the wrist area and i'm going to be demonstrating how to do that um you should notice that when you try on your sweater right now the the wrist area is quite big so we want to bring in that a little bit so that we have something that's tight around the wrist so you're going to attach your yarn i'm going to use orange as i had mentioned before so i'm going to attach into the chain three space of one of the granny squares and you're going to make a chain of six so after your chain of six you're going to go into the second chain from the hook with a single crochet and continue to single crochet all the way down you should have a total of five single crochets so once you have your five single crochets you're going to go into the the first stitch after the chain three space and make a slip stitch make a slip stitch into the next uh, stitch and make a slip stitch into the next so those are three slip stitches and then turn your work and you're going to go into your five single crochets with one uh, single crochet worked into the back loop. So you should see that I'm working on into the back loop only so that we create a ribbed effect. So after this, you're going to chain one, turn your work go into the back loops only with one single crochet so the number of stitches that you work for your ribbing should remain the same which is five um single crochets per row or however long you want your ribbing to be so the moment i have my five single crochets worked in the back loop i'm going to go into the next three stitches with one slip stitch into each a moment I'm done with that turn your work and you are going to single crochet across and we're going to repeat that all the way around so this is for the wrist area so that we bring in the the ribbing to be tight around our wrist so you chain one turn single crochet into each and every single crochet and after that uh, slip stitch into the next three stitches one two and three and turn your work so repeat that until you get to the chain three space and i'll show you what to do from there All right, so we're almost coming to the chain three space and you can see I have one stitch here before the chain three space. So I'm going to place my next slip stitch into the chain three space. So one was here and then into the chain three space and then one into the chain three space on the next granny square. So make sure you don't confuse it every chain three space gets only one single crochet and the moment you're done with that you're just going to continue to do the same exact thing all the way around 
so make sure you're always going into the back loop only i'm struggling a bit to get this first stitch okay chain one turn one single crochet back loop only until you have a total of five stitches okay so just go around like that until you get to this point i'll meet you back here when you've made it around your wrist Okay guys, so um, I am done making it all the way around and what we are going to do is to turn our work to the wrong side. Make sure your work is on the wrong side so that we can join um, our ribbing. Just turn your work to the wrong side like this after your last slip stitch. I'm going to just pull on this yarn. I can even cut it because I know exactly how much I need for the for closing up so okay so you're going to turn your work to the wrong side actually I've done two slip stitches here and I'll make one more into the very first space turn my work and then I do my last row of um, single crochets in the back loop only so the moment you're done with that you are going to start joining so you're going to chain one and turn your work and start joining these pieces together so I'm going to just use slip stitch going into stitch to stitch with a slip stitch and I do the same onto the next stitch then into the third fourth and into the fifth that's the very last one maybe a little bit to a bit a little bit hard to grab but that's the last one and then you're going to chain one pull through and you're going to tie these two strings together all right after that you're going to just chop your yarn so let's see how that has translated onto the right side okay so this is what we have and you can see it has come in a little bit not so much but this is just enough for our wrist and if i put my arm through this is what we have we have that puffiness going on um if you want it a little bit on the tighter side then you're going to increase the number of slip stitches in between um the rows so instead of doing uh one slip stitch into the next three stitches then you're going to do into the next four stitches then you come back but uh, that's a, a personal preference uh, you can always alter it the way you want your sweater to be so I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on the opposite side for my second sleeve and then I'll come back and show you what to do for this part um the main body of the sweater okay guys so i went ahead to try both options the one for the three stitches in between the rows and then the one for four st slip stitches in between the rows and this is what i was talking about uh when you do four stitches in between the rows you're going to get a much smaller uh, ribbing around the wrist as compared to three stitches in between and I think I'm more satisfied with this smaller one because it gives a puffier look puffier effect and it is more comfortable around the wrist as you can see as compared to what we had before so 
um, if this is the look you're going for you're going to have to undo the other wrist and then you do exactly what you've done here so four stitches in between the rows instead of three and I think I'm more satisfied with this than um, this one so let's compare one more time I think there's too much space on the one with three stitches in between the rows so just do what you have to do to get a better look so that means I have to remove this one and do exactly the same approach as I have on the second wrist then um, we shall come back to the body of the sweater and do the ribbing at the base and then around the neckline and the opening of the sweater so after working on the sleeves ribbing uh, we're going to come to the bottom of the sweater we're going to first work around the bottom of the sweater and for that we are going to attach our yarn in any chain three space i'll go onto the corner the middle corner of the front panel and we're going to attach our yarn and we're going to make a chain of i don't know how thick you want this to be but i'm going to go for a chain of 10 i think one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so we have our 10 chains you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and you're going to single crochet into each and every stitch so you will have a total of nine single crochets we're almost doing the same exact thing as the ribbing on the wrist so after this you're going to go into the next three stitches or four stitches that will also depend on um, the look you're going for at the base of the sweater so I'll do three stitches because I don't want the base of the sweater to come in so much so three stitches and then turn my work and single crochet all the way back with a total of nine single crochets worked in the back loop don't forget we only work in the back loop all right so the moment you're done with that you're going to chain one turn your work and work in the back loop and that's all that we have to do all the way until we get to um, the second corner of the second front panel so around the base of the sweater so the moment you're done with your last stitch you go into the next three stitches with one slip stitch into each stitch turn your work and you're going to make one single crochet back loop only into each and every stitch all right so this is what we have continue to do that all the way around your sweater at the base and so this is me trying to work all the way across the base of the sweater and um, this is what you're going to have at the end of the ribbing at the base of the sweater once you're finished this is what you will have let me show you a clearer view So that's what you're going to have now we're going to work something else around the opening of the sweater all the way from the sides and up the neck line and then down to the other side so that's all that's left for this sweater to um, get done with the orange part Um, so as you can see I attached my yarn at the corner of the bottom ribbing and I started working all the way up so you're going to continue to work the ribbing 
but this time we are going to go into the next two stitches not three stitches it's going to be the next two stitches so um that is going to help us so that the opening uh ribbing doesn't bring in the sweater so much so you're going to go into the next two stitches with one slip stitch and then work your next row and for um that side ribbing i did a total of uh, eight chains and i started working one single crochet back and forth and then one slip stitch into the next two stitches so this this is what i came up with afterwards so the next part is to weave in your ends as you can see i have already started so the middle part is a little bit on the neater side but we still have so many ends to weave in because we are cutting our yarn while making well, the i'm going to go ahead and do that and then i'll show you the finished product guys and um just a quick reminder if you didn't hear it at the beginning i am selling this cardigan either through instagram dm or um on my website i don't know if it will be up by the time i upload but you can order for it through my instagram dm and you can choose your own colors so let me go ahead and weave in all these ends okay guys so i wanted to show you a clear picture of how your sweater would look like after weaving in the ends you remember we had so many strings laying around and here they are i'm done weaving them in and your sweater should look as neat as this and even when you open onto the wrong side you're not seeing anything going on this is not what's happening on the opposite side because i'm not yet done with this side i still have a lot to weave in and i don't want to make in this video any longer than it already is so um i'm going to stop the video here and uh, we shall see the final product on my social media pages or on my facebook instagram and also in the thumbnail of this uh tutorial so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below to let me know what you think about this video. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.